him purified himself even as he is pure. And in nurturing this hope in us by the grace of God, it is my pleasure to bring to the pulpit our regional overseer, Pastor Michael Dada. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Happy Easter to you all. Those of you over here in Washington, D.C., those of you watching through the YouTube, uh, through the Zoom, or whatever social media network, I wish you all happy Easter in Jesus' name. I pray that the resurrection power of the Almighty God will be activated in your lives, in your family, and in all that has to do with you in Jesus' name. We have been having our Easter retreat. We started on Thursday, and we have listened to messages from our general superintendent, as well as from other anointed, appointed, and approved men of God. And I can tell you Recording that it's been a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. And as we listen at this time, you will be blessed. Turn to whoever is next to you and say, you will be blessed. And you tell the person next to you and say, I will be blessed. And so the blessings of God will be permanent in our lives all together in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful unto you for the opportunity of knowing you. Recording in progress. We thank you, Father, for this unmerited favor you have granted us to be called your children. And Lord, the day we give our lives to you, we made a promise to work with you, to continue with you and in you all through the days of our lives. And Lord, as the journey progresses, we we'll see there are challenges on the way. But then we have this inner assurance that he who has begun a good thing in us will see us through to the very end. So dear Lord, hold our hands. Dear Lord, hold our hands. Keep us through to the very end in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that at the end of this journey, we shall wear a crown. Speak to us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this moment of time, we shall be considering the message titled, Winning the Imperishable Crown. Can somebody say that? Can you say it one more time? Winning the imperishable crown. I look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 19 through to 26. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming, then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign. I need an amen there. Amen. For he must reign amen. till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I have the good news for you. A time is coming that death will have no power over you, over me, over us in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. We're still in that same First Corinthians, verse 58. It says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, because a time is coming that Christ will have everything under his feet, that a time is coming that Christ will pull down all rules and all authority and all power and all, all dominion. 
A time is coming that Christ is going to reign and his saints will be reigning with him. Come back to that verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, brothers, sisters, parents, children, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And in the resounding amen. amen. So then, we make up our mind to live for God, to serve the Lord all through the rest of our life. Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. He that overcometh and shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now, understand that every warrior in the battle of life is expected to be awarded some compliments one way or the other because they overcame. Every triumphant athlete end up with some sort of trophy after a brilliant competition. Soccer players, basketball, uh, basketball players, football players, and most sportsmen become rich through successful performances. The worldly pigeons are no exceptions in getting crowned based on human judgment. But a day is coming that the judge of the whole universe is going to judge you righteous, judge you upright, and reward your labor in life in Jesus' name. So God has decided in his wisdom to reward his faithful children with eternal reward after their pilgrim and sojourning here on earth. The word imperishable, understand? The title is winning the imperishable crown. We need to break it down a little bit so we can understand what we're talking about. Many a times I realize that we speak some words that, yeah, we think we understand, but when we now ask what does it mean, then it does on you, what a minute. I thought I know it. So, let's do a little bit of uh, dictionary uh, interpretation here. The word imper imperishable means everlasting. It means enduring, something that cannot perish. It means eternal. If it cannot perish, it means it's going to be there forever. Something that endures. No matter the scourge of the sun, no matter the weather, it endures, imperishable. It's something that is permanent, is perpetual, and something that is unending. So when we talk about winning the imperishable crown, the crown that we get here on earth, that men of this world gives unto us, perishes, can be destroyed, but that from above is imperishable. And then we talk about crown. I know you must have seen crown before. Whether on a king, a monarch, or in the picture, or in a movie, whatsoever. But in the light of the context of what we are reading today, imperishable crown, what does it really mean? It simply means glory. Somebody say glory. glory. Somebody say glory. Glory is coming your way in Jesus' name. And you know that glory glows. So, crown represents glory. Crown represents power. It represents majesty. It represents authority. It represents legitimacy. You are legitimately enthroned to be there. It means triumph. In the battle of life, people compete for the throne. And when eventually, in the midst of all those people competing, you come out as the winner, you triumph, and so you are crowned. And hear me, we are in the battle of life, and I have the good news for you, you will overcome. Yeah. I say you will overcome. Yeah. And so this crown also represents immortality. It represents righteousness, and today is a day of resurrection. It represents resurrection because it is only those that resurrect with Christ that will be crowned with this glory. And only God can give this kind of crown to anyone. 
no other man. Only God can judge righteously, no other man. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. There the Bible says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Doing wonders. Only God can do this. Psalm 111, 111 verse 3. Psalm 111, verse 3. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endured for how long? Forever, forever, forever. And uh, it is well with you. It is well with you. Understand again that if it is only in this life that we have hope, we are of all men the most miserable. The most miserable. I look at the message under three points. Number one, the description of the imperishable crown. The description of the imperishable crown. As we look at this um, subtopic, we want to look at the crown we are talking about. I gave us a little hint about it already. How the crown is something that endures forever. How the crown is something that represents righteousness and holiness. How the crown represents something that endures the test of time. But then we want to look a little further. And as we look a little further into this crown, we're also going to be seeing the different kind of crown that is there available for us. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And every man that striveth for mastery, strive, is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. We an incorruptible. That is found in the King James Version. The same thing when you not come into the New King James Version is where we got the word imperishable. And I read from New King James Version now, the same passage of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. The Lord God of heaven will help us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, King James Version uses the word corruptible. And when we say something corrupts, it means something, again, look at the crown that people get on earth. To get that crown, uh, sometimes they bribe. So, corruptible is bribeable. It is Something that can see corruption that can be destroyed. When we say corruptible, we are talking about unprincipled way or process of obtaining things. We are talking about something that is abominable, corruptible. Something that is horrible, perishable, debatable. You know, sometimes the athletes of the world, they compete. And then the referee or the moderator, whatever they call them, uh, when they make a final judgment, you see people say, no, it shouldn't be so. It shouldn't have been so. Sometimes they get bribed from behind the scene. The referees that uh, oversees the soccer players and the rest of it, sometimes they negotiate. If you have been listening to what goes on in the world all over, so, it is something that they bribe themselves. It's something that is debatable. Did he really win? Did she really win? But the crown we are talking about, the crown of glory, once God awards it, nobody can fault that decision. Let the church wake up. Amen. So, sometimes the earthly crown is questionable, the corruptible. It's unrighteous. But then, when you talk about the incorruptible crown, the incorruptible crown, it stands for morality. 
It stands for principle. It's a principled way of doing things. There is no hide and seek game. We are talking about something that is just, straight, honest, upright, enduring, and lasting. Once again, only God can give an imperishable crown. Yeah. Only God can give an incorruptible crown to any man. So then, listen to this. Man may award you. Only God can reward you. Anything you do in life, do it to the glory of the name of the Lord. Never mind about the award of man. They can award you, they can withdraw their award. But when God rewards, nobody can withdraw that reward in Jesus' name. Amen. Of course, again, kings of the earth get crowned. Second Kings chapter 11, verse 12. Queens on earth get crowned. Esther chapter 2, verse 17. Not that alone. Heroes are crowned. Patient people, people that are patient, patiently waiting on the Lord also are crowned. Uh, James chapter 1, verse 12. It says, Blessed is a man that endureth temptation. You endure, you wait. You are patient. You are not running ahead of God. Blessed is a man that endure temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Love him. Revelation chapter 3 verse 11 now says, Behold, I come quickly. I need an amen. amen. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. No one will take your crown in Jesus' name. In the world today, athletes celebrate their medals of gold. They celebrate their silver and bronze, which are corruptible, and sometimes the winner surrenders it to a new champion at the end of the season. Many today are clamoring for shift and titles where they are crowned, the beads and the carvings that cannot add length to their life in any way or form. We are talking about eternal crown. Crown that is only from God. Crown that will never, never fade away. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Here on earth, when you are in a race, one person gets the crown, but praise the Lord. God has made a provision for you, for me, for all of us, that by the power of his mind, everyone that succeeded in, succeeded in the race will get their own crown. Amen. I will wear my crown. I, wear my crown. I said I will wear my crown. What are these type of crowns we are talking about? Number one, the crown of life. The crown of life. James chapter 1 verse 12. Blessed is a man that endures temptation. For when he's tried, he shall receive the crown of life. Which the Lord had promised to them that love him. So you've got to love the Lord. Endure with God. Be patient with God to get this crown of life. The second crown, five of them. Mentioned in the scripture, five of them. The second one is the incorruptible crown. First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. We'll read it again and again, but let's go over it again. And every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Look up at me. You will not labor in vain. You will not labor in vain. Amen. You will not labor in vain. Amen. Wherever you are listening to me, you will not labor in vain in Jesus' name. Amen. The next crown is the crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness. And this is why you cannot afford to be unrighteous. In the way and manner you do the things that you do, 
This is the reason why you cannot afford to be a pretender or an hypocrite. The crown of righteousness. You do the right thing at the right time in the right way for the right reason. The right motive. You don't want to be like that king that did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. On the day of judgment, there will be a lot of wonders. A lot of wonders. A lot of wonders. There are people with thoughts and lies will make it to heaven because of the way we judge by what we see, by what we hear, by how we feel. But God that judges the heart will say, depart from me. I know you know, you walk out of iniquity. On that day, the glorious day, the day of reckoning, a lot of pastors will be rejected. May you not be rejected. A lot of pastors' wife will not make it to glory. May that not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. A lot of church workers, church members. We get there, and then the book of life will be open, and then their name will not, be, will not be there. Your name, I declare, will not be erased from the book of life. And then there are people that we, do, we look down on. There are people we don't think will amount to anything. There are people we have rejected by our human standard. There are people that we don't think will cross the line. And then on the other side, you see them walking majestically, walking triumphantly to the celestial city. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. The crown of righteousness, of righteousness, because they're not walking by sight. They're not walking by what they hear. They're not walking by what men see. They're not walking for the praise of men. They walk for the glory of the living God alone. In their hearts, they're righteous. They're pure. They're upright. They're not looking for position. They're not looking for title. They're not looking for recognition. And Anything they say, they meant it in their heart. In their heart. Open your Bible to the book of Psalm. And let's not take a quick look at Psalm 15. And see what the word of God is saying. As we consider this crown of righteousness. So that uh, you will know that it's not just about religion. It is about uh, holy, righteous, and upright living. Lord. Who shall abide from verse 1? Psalm 15, verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in the heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. In whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them. I can't hear you. That fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor took it reward against the innocent. He that doeth this thing shall never be moved. Be moved. Be moved. Psalm 24. I look at it from verse 1. The earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands, and a pure heart, and hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and in an amen. amen. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. So the Lord is telling you and telling me that this crown we are talking about is meant for people that are conscientious, committed, devoted, dedicated, upright, righteous and just in every area of their life. It is not a crown meant for hypocrites. You know, unfortunately in our church, and I need to say this again, and um, 
There are people in our church that their righteousness is outward dressing. That is their righteousness. On that day, on that day, your dressing will be burnt in fire. But when the righteousness is that of the heart, when you say a thing, you meant what to say. Not that you say one thing, why you have another thing in your mind. When you live your life in honesty, openness and sincerity, and you are not deceitful, you are not a liar, you are not a thief, you are not covetous, you are not proud. Even the Bible says that God sees the proud person afar off. On that very day, on that very day, the glorious day, the day of reckoning, we come and then that humble man who is always thirsty for the word of God, hungry for the word of God, ready to serve the Lord and to do his will. On that very day, the one that is working tirelessly, tirelessly, not minding whether the body is weak or strong, tirelessly, the one that will be able to say to himself, sudden death, sudden glory, tirelessly, and walking, not because of the gain that will be derived from that war, but just uh, saying, God, bless me, with this life of holiness and righteousness, I must live to his glory. On that very day, on that very day, when that person stops breathing here on earth, the angels of heaven in heaven, together with the Lord Jesus, they will be on their feet to welcome home the hero of faith. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. The crown of righteousness, Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love is appearing who is in that category I said who is in that category I am in the number I said I am in the number you will be there in the number in Jesus name and then you, when you cross over and you make it there and the crown of righteousness is there and then there will be joy and jubilation and so I talk about the crown of rejoicing the crown of rejoicing First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9 for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming let me explain this crown of rejoicing you know the Bible tells us in the book of Daniel that he that winneth soul is wise Daniel chapter 12 uh, if all your life all you do is to fight for position to fight for title to fight for recognition to fight to be known you will be laboring in vain but what kind of labor honors the Lord rejoice at the heart of the almighty the very kind of labor that made Christ Jesus to give up his throne to give up the honor of angels, to give up everything, the glamorous things in heaven, and came to the world for the salvation of the world, for God's soul of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then that commission from the throne of grace made him to walk all through the streets of Jerusalem, the streets of Gab uh, Galilee, all the streets of Capernaum, and then calling people one by one and, uh, uh, and showing them the way of salvation and bringing them into reconciliation with the Lord. Uh, and uh, he told the disciples, go, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel and preach the gospel. You know what I discover in our churches today? People want to pastor, but they are not ready to be so winner. People want to pastor, they are not ready to evangelize. People want to pastor, but they are not ready to gather the people together. That is not the way it goes. When the Bible said this sign shall follow another belief, you have to be on the way going. You minister here, you minister there. You have to begin to cast your seed everywhere you go. You don't wait for a convenient time. 
preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season because you never can tell which one is going to bring forth hundredfold, fiftyfold, and the thousandfold as you labor the Lord with the word your labor. And when these souls are converted, and then as you march into heaven and march into glory, they are following you, and then they are testifying before the throne of, uh, of grace, before the angels of the Lord, and saying, he won us to the Lord. He converted us. He preached gospel to, the, to us. And then you look around. I can't wait for that day to come. I think people will be weeping in heaven. This is what I mean. The tears of joy. The tears of joy. The tears of joy. And then you see James. James, you made it. Abigail, you made it. Sarah, you made it. Enoch, you made it. You will make it. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, you will make it. Yeah. And then all these converse of yours that you labored on, that you wept on. You know, sometimes even when you are working on people, you are doing your best for them, they still work against you. But you don't give up. You don't give up. And at the end of the day, they made it, you rejoice for them. And then they look around, knowing fully well that there were many people that started well, but never ended well. That started well, but never ended strong. And then they look at their pastor, and they look at the soul winner. And then the people, they look at the soul winner and say, soul winner, preacher, pastor, teacher, you made it also. The preacher is rejoicing, the people are rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing. And then, and then finally, the crown of glory. The crown of glory. First Peter chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for fear the lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the sheep shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away. And I need an amen. amen. This crown of glory, pay attention here. If you're a worker in the church, if you're a worker and you think you're working for your pastor, you are working for anybody, may I tell you now, I appreciate your loyalty. I appreciate your commitment. I appreciate your devotion. But you are for me the most miserable. Because you thought you are working for me. Because you are expecting to get thank you from me. Because you are getting to get an award from me. You get your reward already. But when you come to yourself and you say to yourself, Yes, I have my leader there. God may have used him to put me here, but the real one that has called me is the Almighty God. And you labor, and you labor, and you labor. Whether the leader is there or the leader is not there, you keep laboring with heaven inside. You keep laboring, laboring with the consciousness of the fact that the leader may not see, but the Almighty God sees. When that time comes, you'll be rewarded. With a crown of glory. And so, this is a crown for pastors. If you labor well, as a rich shepherd over the flock of God. A, a crown for the apostles. A crown for the prophets. A crown for the evangelists. A crown for teachers. A crown for all the ministers of the gospel. Irrespect, you know some people, they say, what do you do in the church? Well, I'm just an ordinary cleaner. I think the cleaners in the church is doing a great job. If they will do it with all their hearts. I need an amen there. Amen. If they will be faithful in their doing that work. So no matter what you are doing, you are a minister of the gospel. Look at this place. We are all able to come in here and sit down. Because somebody, somewhere, somehow, had been here before us to clean up this very place and make it habitable for us, that person is also serving the Lord. You say, I, I'm just an ordinary usher. I just stand there. When they come, I tell them, go this way, go that way. Can you imagine if there is no order in the church of God? 
If everything is disorganized. So as an usher, you're doing a great job. And uh, even David said, I would rather be a potter, an usher in the house of the Lord. Your labor will be rewarded in Jesus' name. I quickly get to the second point. Demand for holy living before receipt of imperishable crown. This crown we are talking about requires requirements. There are conditions for making it. And understand that athletes of the earth generally do not only subject themselves to rigorous discipline and exercises. They also do everything possible to abstain from distractions and from anything on earth, be it their family, be it their family member, friends, or whosoever, anything that can adversely, adversely impact their performance. They want to be their best. They don't want to go and compete without proper preparation. Just like every athlete feels sad and sorrowful. If for any reason they should miss the trophy, so will any believer, any Christian be if they miss heaven at last. May you not miss heaven in Jesus' name. Every heaven-bound believer should be committed to daily, holy, righteous living, irrespective of their situation. As believers, we must ensure that both our spirit and soul, as well as our body, are cleansed from all the filthiness of the flesh. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 1 Peter chapter 1, from verse 14. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves, according to the former laws in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. This holy God is calling you and calling me to life of holiness. Look at Leviticus chapter 11, verses 44, 44 and 45, where the Bible says, Leviticus 11, 44. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt. To be your God, ye shall therefore be holy, for I can hear somebody. Chapter 20 of that Leviticus, verses 7 and 8, Leviticus 20, 7 and 8. Sanctify yourselves therefore, and be ye holy. For I am the Lord your God, and ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. Sanctified you. You know, I like the song we always sing. You know, I like to sing. Amen. It will be a crime for a teacher not to teach. It will be an offense for a preacher not to preach. Amen. Amen. The song says, Ye shall be holy unto me, for I, thy Lord, am holy. Ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and you shall sanctify yourself and be holy, for I am holy, and you shall sanctify yourself and be holy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6. 
And the Lord thy God sh shall circumcise thy heart. I need a better one. Yeah. And the heart of thy seed. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul. That thou mayest live. That thou mayest live. God demands holiness from all those who will have relationship with him here on earth. And who will as well spend eternity with him in heaven. Those that are born of God are readily identified by their lifestyle of holiness and of glorious living. Such people, among other things, they possess irrevocable consecration. They possess meticulous commitments to holy living. People like that, people like that, people like that. Uh, maybe I should tell you what I'm talking about. We're talking about imperishable. So the first letter is irrevocable consecration. Meticulous commitment to holy living. Principled commitment to dedicated life. Earnestly contending for the faiths once delivered unto the saints. Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Respecting all the commandments of God. Irreproachable commitment to God's glory. You are not just a mere fanatic. No. You are not preaching something that you cannot back up with the word of God. But something that is without reproach, without reproach, irreproachable commit, commitment to God's glory, sacrificially serving the Lord at every opportunity. Your job is not the primary thing in your life. Your family is not the primary thing in your life. And unfortunately, we have put our family above God. But God must come first in our lives and then he may. What's the next letter there? Age. Humbly holding fast the profession of your faith. Humbly holding fast the profession of your faith. A. Available for so winning, irrespective of the situation. I remind you again, he that winneth soul is wise. The letter B. Believing on the law so that you not be ashamed on the last day. Hold on firm to the profession of your faith. Letter L, laying aside every weight that's that is only beset us. And finally, embracing all his promises in your life. The promises on healing, on holiness, on sanctification, everything you hold on to them. Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Second Corinthians 7, 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I get to the third point. Decoration of holy saints with imperishable crown. Decoration. A day is coming, and very soon, that you will be honored. That we shall be honored. The day of reckoning is at hand. When everyone shall be rewarded according to his or her works, soon the days of fears and sorrow will be over. I need an amen. amen. And as believers, the joy of the crowning day should encourage us to remain steadfast and zealous unto good work. The assurance that believers' labor will not only be remembered, but will also be rewarded should challenge every one of us to be fervent in our work and service unto the Lord. I told you earlier on that he that winneth soul is wise. God will help us to be wise in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 15, from verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Amen. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
For this incorruptible must put on incorruption, and this matter must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this matter shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 58. Therefore, 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 my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Persecution will, there be, will be there. Opposition will be there. Rejection will be there. Be people that don't know what you are going through, they will condemn you, they will judge you. Be not unmovable. Always abandon the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, I need a big amen. Yeah. Amen. So that we must strive lovely and holily to be dignified on the crowning day. It is a crown that never fades. It is, it is a crown that is meant for those that word crown. Write it vertically again. Crown. It is a crown that is meant for those who conquer the tempter's enticement. Proverbs 1.10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Letter R. It is a crown for those who resist their adversaries by faith. By faith. First Peter 5 Peter 5.9, whom resisted first in the faith. In the faith. You know, verse 8 talks about the devil as a roaring lion. Seeking whom to devour, he will not devour you. But verse 9 now says, Whom resisted first in the faith, knowing that the same affliction accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Letter O, overcome in the battle of faith. We are in a battle. We are in a battle, whether you like it or not. The devil is fighting for your soul. But the Lord will win the battle for you. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Overcomers in the battle of faith. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. Somebody say that for me to hear. I didn't hear somebody. Can you say it one more time? Be thou faithful unto Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Crown of life. The Lord will give it to you. He will give it to me. He will give it to all of us in Jesus' name. What's the next letter in crown? W, we stand in the evil day. You will stand. Evil days will come. The wind will blow, the storm will, will rage. But you stand. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evening. And having done all, somebody just means that. Somebody just means that. To stand, you will stand in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the end finally never give up to any fear or sorrow. Because he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. You must be one of those that will be crowned. I will be one of those that will be crowned. Shall we rise upon our feet? Members of the choir, I mean, the, the media department project for me on a hill far away. Let the organist be on the keyboard. We'll sing this song and then we'll go to God in prayer. I'm done with the sermon. It's time for prayer. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. We are the dearest and best for a world of lost sinner was slain. So I cherish the old of the cross, not the mundane things of life, not the fanfare of life, 
not post or position or title in the church. I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And no matter the trouble I have, one day I will exchange that trophy for a crown. For a crown. For a crown.
And if you continue, you want to go before the Lord in prayer. What are you holding on to? What are you holding on to? The titles of life will fade away. The glories of earth will become rotten. But the all of cross, the emblem of suffering and of shame. Are you ready to suffer for Christ? Are you ready to suffer for Christ? Jesus. <laughs> 